number one to talk about number one topic i want to get off my chest and kind of highlight to you guys which i'm sure most of you are aware or familiar with is house of dragon on hbo I'm sure most of you who have been fans of Game of Thrones are aware of this series and you know it exists, but it's two episodes in. I didn't want to talk about the first episode because I didn't think, you know, I, I was trying to make sure or was a bit worried that the first episode was a bit of a fluke. But so far, two episodes in and having kind of gone on a massive sort of deep dive on various channels on YouTube, like In Deep Geek and a few others, and researched um, the book that it's based on. Uh, I think it's like Fire and Blood and, you know, the whole story about Song and Ice and Fire and everything else around it. I can definitely say that the first two episodes of House of Dragon have absolutely knocked it out of the park. If you are somebody who was incredibly disappointed with the last three seasons of Game of Thrones, or maybe specifically um, season eight of Game of Thrones, and you was really kind of downtrodden about it, and you was kind of put off from the entire Game of Thrones franchise um, and fantasy series altogether, and you were questioning why you liked just the work of George R. R. George R. R. Martin, I definitely would implore you, I definitely would beg you to please give house of dragon a try because it is really really good it's a bit more slow paced than game of thrones it's not as gory or action-packed as game of thrones it kind of does um i think somebody described it as what was that series that everyone was watching for a bit during the pandemic um that was about the family that are that have got like a massive company and it's all about the internal affairs so it's, it's a little bit word it's a little bit kind of conversational right there's a lot of conversations going along you have to pay attention to that there's a lot of kind of political games so it's more about that with dragons included but in terms of it following the source material to the T with some kind of creative um, twist here and there, it does a really good job of it. And I think for the most part, if you're a fan of fantasy or you're a fan of the books, I think this is what you really do want because I don't think everything in books translates to on the screen, especially from the books that I've read um, in terms of sci-fi books and whatnot. Some details don't necessarily translate that well on TV series. So sometimes the showrunners and producers, when they take creative liberty to change certain things, like I think in House of Dragon, um, Daenerys and Alnita, the main kind of two proponents of the kind of show um, who are probably going to end up facing off towards the end, no spoiler, they are the similar kind of age. But in the books, if I'm not mistaken, um, Rhaenerys Targaryen is way younger than Elena. I think she's like eight and the Elena girl is like in her 20s or something. But they kind of aged them up in the TV series to make the eventual kind of falling out to hit a bit more, do you know what I mean? Because they start off as being really close kind of girlfriends and sisters and then they kind of end up being sworn enemies towards the end of it. So that, that kind of creative license, I'm really a big fan of and other things they've done as well towards the end. But it's really good. It follows the books really well, I think. Um, the pacing is done really well. They're kind of ramping up at the end of season, of the, at the end of this episode two, you definitely get the feeling that we're going to start to get, it's going to start to ramp up a bit. There might be a couple of deaths coming along, I, I would imagine so. There might be some twists and turns that we haven't seen already coming up. So I would really implore everybody that hasn't checked it out yet to please check out House of Dragon. And I shouldn't have been surprised. The fact that HBO were producing it would mean that it was always going to be good because they have a really high standard or they have a really high... Um, they have a really high quality standard in terms of the series that they put out they rarely do put out dud episodes or dud series in general so i shouldn't have been surprised that the show is absolutely banging but really and truly it's really kind of caught me off surprise and if anything has kind of reaffirmed to me or reconfirmed for most people how bad um, game of thrones ended and what shit job they those guys did in kind of wrapping that show up because that show was really primed to be something special they rushed it there was no real source material that they could kind of lean on because George R. R. Martin's taking fucking ages to finish the books and probably will never finish them because he's busy being a celebrity and enjoying his money and stuff. Fair enough, it's annoying, but I guess it is what it is. So they kind of tried to fill in the holes themselves and they couldn't necessarily fill it in and they tried to rush it and it ended up being horrible. Um, and now for the most part, most people don't even... Because imagine how much we all invested in Game of Thrones, how many years that kind of spanned, and hardly anybody, I think, goes back and watches old episodes of Game of Thrones and kind of picks it apart and whatever, especially the last four seasons or last three seasons, right? They're an absolute horror show. But I definitely do think if they do what they should be doing with House of Dragon and kind of keep the pace the way it is and full of the source material and don't veer off too much and do crazy things with it. I definitely do think this could end up being a real all-time classic TV series coming up and it's really handy, especially coming up to the winter months that we have something that we can kind of tune into every week, you know, because I feel like nowadays, especially with how media is and streaming is nowadays, it's very difficult to find TV shows that you can, that you are actually bothered about waiting for it to drop the week that they do drop 
drop and you just kind of you know let them kind of pile up and you just bang them all at once but I think the fact that this show is so good and people are having conversations about it on social it makes you want to kind of jump in and watch it when it does drop so you can also lend your opinion and views as to what you see on the screen but I definitely do recommend you check it out House of Dragon is absolutely phenomenal I'm having a great time watching it it's really making me kind of fall back in love with everything that surrounds you know um a song of house a song of ice and fire everything that surrounds game of thrones and that whole entire universe and it's and it's actually got me reinvigorated to check out some more fantasy books and get myself in that as well because it does do a good job of kind of transporting you to this other world because if i'm not mistaken it's set like 170 or so years before the events of game of thrones as well so you get to see all the dragons you know you get to see the targaryens at their absolute pomp um you know doing what they do best and it's just an absolute great series i really do recommend it some really good bits and pieces here in there so definitely do check it out if you haven't but i'm sure most people that check out my podcast have probably checked it out already i'm pretty sure